me, Mike Self and I. It's me, Mike Self and I. Me, Mike Self and I. It's me, Mike Self and I. Yes, 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 Listening to another exciting episode of me, myself, and I, 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 episode 96, 96, ladies and gentlemen, 96, we are here at our 96 episode, we're almost getting closer to 100, do I have something planned for 100, no, I don't, I'm not kidding. I am telling each and every one of you the God honest truth. I don't have anything planned for. I don't have anything planned for my hundredth episode. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, but that's okay because I'm not worried about that episode right now. I'm here focused on the present moment and the present moment is this episode right here right now and that episode is now well well i know it's been a while hello podcasters hello me myself and iers hello 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 welcome back to the quiet storm welcome back it's been a while where have I been? Well, I've been doing comedy. I was in doing comedy uh, last week. I was in Throckmorton Theater. So thank you, the great people of Throckmorton Theater, for having me come out and perform the legendary Throckmorton Theater. It's such a wonderful place. I don't think you guys realize how amazing this place is. This place has all the great legends there. It has Mort Saul. He always performs there. The great and powerful, amazing Robin Williams. That was his stomping grounds. He would always go there to work on material. He would always go there to uh, get ready for his specials or just develop. That was his playground. The Throckmorton Theater was his playground. And Dana Carvey. Dana Carvey performs there all the time as well. And it's such a great thing to be a part of. Even though I don't, I've ne- I have never crossed paths with any of them. And I always wanted to cross paths with Robin Williams, but I never did, unfortunately. And I was very, 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 very saddened. But I was really angry when he passed away because I never had that opportunity like everyone else has. So I don't I don't ever think you guys realize this. Uh, I hold my sadness with anger. <laughs> but that's just me. Um, but you know what? I went back to the Rockmorton Theater I saw a picture of Mort Saul and Robin Williams, and I said, thank you guys for allowing me to be a part of this. And I graced the stage, and it was fun. It was amazing. Absolutely amazing. Everyone crushed, and we had a great time. And I'm so thankful. But that was then. And I know I'm supposed to hang on every single week and stay on top of things, folks. And I'm sorry. I think I'm a half a week late. I think. Things are different when you're a father. I'm just going to throw it out there. Things are different when you're... What is wrong with this? Let's try right here. How about that? Is that better? Is that better? Let me just... How about now? Ooh, that sounds nice. Doesn't that sound nice? How about this? How about now? Hey, hey, hey. I'm actually... How unprofessional is this? What the heck am I doing? I'm changing everything... At the wrong time. I'm recording a freaking podcast. What is wrong with me? It's all right, though. You'll forgive me. You know why you forgive me? Because I'm not Harvey Weinstein. (laughs) 
That's what I'm going to say from now on. That's exactly what I'm going to say from now on. Mike, how could you be doing this during your recording? How could you be how could you be this type of person when you're recording? Why are you operating the microphone and trying to fix it before you re- while you're recording? It's all right. I'm not Harvey Weinstein, okay? That's what I'm going to that's my scapegoat from here on out, okay? As long as I'm not on a Harvey Weinstein level, I think I'm pretty good, okay? So it's still a good podcast, okay? Before I start talking about Harvey Weinstein, let me say big ups to my Cubites, the Cube Life. What up Cubicles? Cubicle, Cubicle, Cube Life on the next Cube Life. Are you ready to copy that fax? What does that mean? Copy a fax? Who copies a fax nowadays? No one. Cube life. Staplers. Get that. Reports in. Done. Before the quarter. I give you. Oh God, I respect you guys so much. The cube life. I really, truly, honestly respect the cube life so much because... You guys put up with so many numbers. You put up with all that. There's zero creativity. It's just (laughs) all day long. You might get a glimpse of sunlight. I get it. You might get a little glimpse. And I understand. I'm I'm with you 100%. and, and, And I'm so glad that you're listening to my podcast because this is meant for you. Okay? I hope you're listening. I hope you got a earpod in or ear excuse me earbud inside your ear right now or headphones and you're just nodding off pretending you're listening to music while you type like that all the time and typing away and then your boss hey uh, hey <laughs> more reports and turn it in sure thing boss <laughs> you might want to stay. You need to stay late because you're the supervisor for this division. Can you? Sure thing, boss. Hey, uh, just want to let you know. Hey, uh, just want to let you know. Would you mind if you, uh, help Martha out because she needs help with, uh. No problem. But the moment you say no, no! You should be grateful that you're working here 12, 13, 14 hours a day, crunching numbers and not seeing any human beings or any other human uh, interaction. Why are you not? Why are you not happy here? I don't understand. This is a great working environment. That's the, that's for me. That's what a boss sounds like in the cube life. I, you know what? I'm, I'm going to say this again, okay? Cubites, I love you guys. You work hard. I'm, I still haven't seen an email from you, okay? What did I say? I will prank call your boss. I will prank call your employee, and I won't say anything about your name or get close to who you are. If you got an annoying employee, if you have an annoying boss that you don't like, let me know and I will take care of them and I will record it live here on my podcast. I've told you that numerous times. All you gotta do is email me at mmipodcast19 at gmail.com. Okay? I want you to be entertained. I want you to listen to the podcast while I'm prank calling your boss. And you're laughing at the exact same time. It could be interactive. It could be fun for you. Why? Because the cube life sucks. I get it, but I'm there for you. And I'm not a Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> not Harvey Weinstein. I'm sure everyone saw the news that Mr. Harvey Weinstein has been found guilty, 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 guilty. He has been found guilty as charged. Yes. Harvey Weinstein is guilty. I don't think he had a walker, did he? I don't know. I, I just see the main headline. I don't need to read all the way through because we all it's it's the talk of the town. Everyone's going to be talking about Harvey Weinstein. Everyone's going to be saying this and that about him. But, and you know what? I'm happy. I'm glad. I was really thinking that he was going to get away with it. Why? Because he's Harvey Weinstein. That's why. I just thought he was just going to get away. Am I saying that it's right what he did? No, absolutely not. I don't think it's right what he did. I don't think it's right at all. 
I don't. Okay. It's it's a horrific thing. I'm so glad this movement finally came up, the Me Too movement, and changed the course of time. Because when you, you always heard it all the time. When you go down to Hollywood, you're going to get in the casting couch and blah, blah. And, you know, maybe all the other scumbag producers will look at Harvey Weinstein and go, ooh, I better be nice to everybody or I better quit the business because everyone's coming after me. And you shouldn't be a slime bag. Okay? I don't know why... Uh, this profession is is make it okay for you to have a casting couch. Why would you want it? Why would you need a casting couch? You should look for talent. I, I'm I'm just gonna, but you know what? It's it's ran by the mafia. Okay, I've said this a hundred times. I've talked about this when Harvey Weinstein first got uh, convicted. When he first, when this all came out, I've said this before. The only reason why Harvey Weinstein is is being prosecuted and is going through the ringer with all this crap and everything's coming up because he didn't pay his mafia dues. You think he's the only producer in Hollywood ever out of a hundred years that has done what he's done? No, <laughs> there's millions. Millions of producers, millions of them, millions of them have gone and, hello, Roman Polanski. Let me just, uh, I just like to throw it out there. You guys know, just look up Roman Polanski. He raped a girl and then went to another country and then came back because, you know, he, he found a loophole and got away with it. That's just one. Okay, there's two. There's Harvey Weinstein, Roman Polanski. Where else? I mean, there's more. And now they're all sweating. I bet you know if I was the mafia, I would double my charge. I would double my dues. You don't want to end up like Harvey Weinstein, right? Huh? Mr. Steven Spielberg. I think you owe us uh, 350 big ones. 350? I thought it was two. Yeah, but uh, your dues went up, you know? Ever since uh, Harvey Weinstein, I'm sure you don't want to end up like that, Mr. Spielberg. Hmm? You want to end up like that? Is that what you want to do? You want to mess with us right now with this Me Too movement, Mr. Spielberg? Would you be surprised? Would you be surprised if Steven Spielberg had all these horrible convictions against him saying, Steven Spielberg did this and he was a whore. He was another Harvey Weinstein. Would you be surprised? Because I wouldn't. I would not be surprised. I hope it's not. I'm not praying that it's happening like that. But I would not be surprised. Okay? I would not be surprised. Because when you see on television, everything that you see on television is not what you think it is. The nicest person on television is probably the biggest jerk in real life. And the biggest jerk on television is probably the nicest person on, on in real life. It's the illusion. It just is. It's the illusion that's created. And everyone's thinking, oh, Harvey Weinstein, he's going to, yes, I'm glad that what happened happened to him. Okay, I'm 100% on board. But there's more producers and directors that have acted like this, and their time's coming too, unless they pay their mafia dues. Ah. <laughs> uh. Anybody see that horrific video of uh, the dwarf? Quaid? Oh, uh -huh. that's such a horrible thing. The, the dwarf? That's terrible. I shouldn't have said that. Quaid. Excuse me. I'm just putting... Oh, my... Why? Are, I, I'm the worst. This is a show. What am I doing? This is a show. <laughs> but Quaid, the one that was being bullied from Australia... Um, did anyone see that video? Oh, it's gut wrenching, isn't it? Isn't it horrible? And then, and then the mom is just constantly fi filming. I don't know, folks. If my kid was distressed like that and says, "I want to kill myself and have a get me a rope," I'm not going to continue to film. I'm not going to continue to go, this is what bullying's all about, folks. Oh, that's a horrible accent. 
That's a horrible Australian accent. But she was filming. Still, he's in distress. He's crying. He's hurting himself. He's hitting himself. He's got. He and he wants a rope. And 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 the mom is still filming. I want a rope, mom. This is what it's like. It's like this all the time. Oh my god, I gotta work on my Australian accent. I do. But it's nice that all the celebrities reached out. And said good things to him. You know, fellow countrymen, Mr. Hugh Jackman. Quiet. I just want to let you know you and I are friends. I know you've been bullying, and bullying is wrong. But me, Hugh Jackman, you and I are friends. From here on out, you're bigger than everyone else. Stand tall, Quaid. Stand tall. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you really... Oh God. And then, you know what? It's great that the rugby team uh, reached out and had him come out to the game and, and gave him all the respect and took pictures. And it's great that comedian Brad Williams did what he did to develop more money and... What is it? $30,000? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm... But he donated a lot of money to send his kid, send this kid over to um, Disney World or Disneyland. I think that's a beautiful thing. But now other rumors are coming out saying that this guy's a fraud. Now rumors are coming out that he's he's 18 years old and he's lying to everybody. And now people are scratching their heads. And I don't know the whole story, but I do know that one thing that it's not 100%. That's what I do know. <laughs> and it sucks. It's terrible because this is the only time celebrities reach out. And I, like I said, I think it's, I, I think what Brad Williams did was way more generous than anyone has ever done instead of doing a selfie video like Hugh Jackman. Just want to let you know, you and I are friends from here on out. You are special, quiet. Coming from Hugh Jackman, fellow Australian. I'm not going to see you in person. I'm not going to give you money. But I just want to deliver a video. And I'm not going to have someone hold the video. I'm going to give you a selfie video so you can see my arms. And let you know that you're not worth me to stand right here with someone taking a video of me. I'm going to hold the video out in arm's length. And let you know. That you're worth it. Because I'm Hugh Jackman. What's that? We're, we're, from, we're from both all, all Australia? Yeah. But I'm not going to meet you in person. You know why? Because I'm busy. And I'm fitting this into my busy schedule because I got a new movie coming out. Or a new play. Or I got to promote my next drink with Ryan Reynolds. So that's what I'm trying to do is to keep face. This is what celebrities do. We keep face. And then we'll say a big speech whenever we win an award. So I'm trying to win another award if I ever if I can ever have that happen. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, Quaid, you and I are friends. And then when I win an award, I'm going to say, let's stop bullying. That's what we need to do. We need to come together as actors writers, producers, and we also need to make sure everyone in human contact can come together and let everyone know that we are friends from a distance, not in person, because I'm not going to, I would be caught, I wouldn't be caught dead with you, mate, because I'm Hugh Jackman, stand tall. <laughs> God. Is it fake? Is it real? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just I'm the guy sitting on the sidelines commenting right now. That's all I'm doing, okay? I don't have a theory. I don't have anything on this. This is not my expertise. I think it's great that all celebrities are reaching out, but it, okay, let this be a lesson. If it's fake, okay, if Quaid is fake and he's 18 years old and he does drugs and he, whatever it is, if he's fake, that sucks. Right. But... What my theory is, when someone gets bullied, do we just give people money? 
Is that, is, that, is that the theory now? We just get people, if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling, you know, down, if you're feeling, if you've been bullied, um, we just give you stuff? Is that, is that how it goes from now on? We're just going to give you stuff? I know you're depressed. I know you've been bullied and people have been making fun of you since the day you were born. Here's money. Instead of a be a real friend, celebrities go and visit and and socialize and talk to him and say hi and say and do that. Don't just send a video. Don't just send money. Don't just send them on a trip. Do something. I, Brad Williams, I think is generous what you've done, but the comparison to Brad Williams versus Hugh Jackman. Come on, Mr. Jackman, it's a little tacky. That's all I'm saying. If you want to be a friend, be a friend. Okay? That's it. Because <laughs> Mike will get it done. Huh? You guys have been watching your wonderful uh, Democratic debates? Hmm? Trump is laughing at everything. Everything. Mike will get it done. Oh, my God. I tell you what. Mike Bloomberg has so much money. He is doing a phenomenal he is killing it in the advertising game yeah he's probably a racist yeah he's probably a scumbag <laughs> he's a rich gajillionaire you don't think so he, i've i just have this one i got this one thing that i got from the mail from him and it's absolutely amazing it's the best it is the best political advertisement i've seen okay it says we want and it's a picture of a woman and then it opens up and then it's, i'm sorry it's a picture of a white woman it says we want then it's a picture of a black woman we want and you open it up it's a picture of a hispanic woman and her daughter we want and it's a picture of a filipino boy we want and then you open up mike bloomberg 2020 mike will get it done ah ah you fake phony. But wait, the, the creativity on this, though. You know? The creativity on this campaign he's doing. He's, this is not cheap. I'm keeping this, Mike Bloomberg. Whether I vote for you or not, I'm keeping what you just sent me because this is phenomenal. Job well done. This is not cheap. Okay? Your money, you may not get my vote, but your money is going, Wow. Mike got it done. Mike, quality health care. Mike got it done. World-class schools. Mike got it done. Climate action. Mike got it done. Gun safety. Mike got it done. Every time you open it up, it says like certain things. That, I'm sure it's all farce. I'm sure they're all lies. But wow, the quality and the, look at the pictures and and the colors and and everyone's smiling except for him because he's too rich to smile. You got to smile, Mike, okay? I don't know if you know this. As a president, people want you to smile. You have to be a model, okay? You have to like everything that everyone likes. That's how you become president, okay? You know what? You got to be careful, folks, because I might vote for him because he looks like a guy that you would want to party with. I think out of all the rich people that we've seen, out of all the rich, yes, is it right? Of course not. But if you had a party for the next four years with Trump or Bloomberg, who are you going to party with? And unless, could you, ma you could see if these guys weren't president. If Trump wasn't president and Mike Bloomberg wasn't running, if these were two regular billionaires chilling on a yacht, who do you think is going to share drugs with? Who do you think is going to share marijuana with? Who do you think is going to give you a drink and share a drink and have a drink with you and have a good time? I think Mike Bloomberg will have a scotch with you, a line of Coke, a couple of joints, and a shot of Jägermeister. No, I think Mike Bloomberg is going to be the one with a silver plate of a pyramid of cocaine. I think he's the type of billionaire 
that's just snoring it. He gives you the joint. He gives you the drinks. And he's just snorting away. You know what I think I should do? I think I should run for president. And Trump is on the other side of the ship. On the other side of the yacht, just counting his money. No, you're not going to run for president. I'm still president. You're going to finish that, Mike? Mike will get it done. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And Trump's going to win. I hate to say it, folks. I, I You know what? And I'm sure people want to love to hear this or not hear this, whatever it is. But Trump is going to win by a landslide. He just is. Whether you vote or not, whether you get out there and vote, everyone, and make a difference. And when you vote and you make sure you vote for the right one, he's still going to win. He's still Bernie Sanders could be the primary. Bernie Sanders can have everybody in the world vote it could see, you could see the polls and says bernie sanders is our next president of the united states and then at 1201 wait a minute recount donald trump won by a half a vote or something something we can't let that happen you're gonna have to it's gonna happen okay trump is gonna win and he's never gonna leave He's never going to leave. He is going to go sit on the lap of the Lincoln Memorial. He's going to go on Lincoln's lap. He's like, you know, I'm going to replace his head, and that's going to be me. But right now, I'm going to go night-night on your lap, Mr. Lincoln. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go, me, 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 grandma, the mother pussy. Me, 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 grandma. And everyone gets upset. You have to vote. Get out there and vote. We must put an end to Trump's reign. Doesn't matter. You don't control the votes. Something's going to happen. I know it is. I know something's going to happen. And I'm prepared for it. Am I being cynical? Am I being jaded? Yes, but I'm being prepared for the worst. I know he's going to win. I just know it. It's, you know when they say, you know how you always, I've always said, always go for your gut. Always go for your gut. And what does your gut always say? Your gut is always right. Your mind can always have conflicting thoughts. Your heart is all over the place. But if you listen to your gut, it is always right. And my gut is saying Trump's going to win by a landslide. I, it's not, I'm not going to vote for him, but I know he's going to win. <laughs> oh, man. Relax, though, folks. Relax. It's not the end of the world. Okay, if Trump wins again, if that happens, is it the end of the world? No. Is it over for America? Probably. Will the the rest of the world respect us? Never again. But hey, we still have Hugh Jackman making movies for us Americans. As long as you got Hugh Jackman making movies and making films or or just being on the American soil promoting whatever, we'll be happy. We'll be fine. Even if Trump even if Trump is president, Hugh Jackman, no, I'm not gonna stand against Trump because Quaid is my friend. Quaid is my friend. All right, let's move on. I thought that bit was going to be a lot funnier, but obviously it's not. But so, and it's okay. You know why? You know why it's okay, ladies and gentlemen? Because we're just going to keep working forward. We're going to keep moving forward in life and figuring out what is important. And what's important in life is greater than any election. What's important in life is greater than any election. You know what's important in life? I'll tell you what's important in life. I'll tell you right now. I will tell you... I will tell you right here, right now, on the Me, Mike, Self, and I. You know, what's, you know what's more important than that? You know what's more important than Mike will get it done? You know what's more important than Bernie Sanders winning? You know what's more important than free health care? I'll tell you what's important. It is time for good news. 
Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for good news. Good news, good news. I am sick and tired of seeing horrible things on television. I'm sick and tired of when you watch something on TV, you see something about a mass shooting or a drunk driver or a mom or a dad doing something horrible to the kids. That is always televised, and I'm sick of it. So this is what I'm doing in my section for good news. In this good news of this week, ladies and gentlemen, is 42-year-old Zamboni driver wins first NHL game after being tapped as an emergency goalie. The 42-year-old Zamboni driver is being hailed as a hockey hero after he stepped in as the visiting team's emergency goalie and helped them win the game. Dave Ayers, who is a Zamboni driver for the Toronto Maple Leafs, was tapped into the play against his home team for the Carolina Hurricanes after both of their goalies were injured on the ice during this weekend's game. Ayers went to, he blocked eight of ten shots that were made against them during the remaining 30 minutes of the game, which helped him secure his the victory of the Hurricanes' victory 6-3. to three. He was designated as a backup goalie and was the first time ever to play. Uh, and the, it goes on, talks about this great, wonderful story. He had a kidney transplant 15 years ago, and that stopped his hockey career. And he's been, he's been, he hasn't been playing hockey since, but he's been a Zamboni driver and he's been around it all of his life. And he still loved the game. And then he finally got his shot at 42 years old. And you know what, folks? I'm getting close to my 40s. Oh my god, I can't believe I just said that. Oh my God, I can't believe I just said that out loud and it makes sense. Holy crap, I'm getting old. But you know what? I know that fear. I know it. When you lose that dream, you're like, damn it, it's over. But this guy right here, he worked his ass off and continued. You got to still have a skill. Even though if you're not playing professional hockey, you still got to practice every day. You wouldn't be blocking eight, eight out of 10 shots if you weren't practicing well, you're just going to be automatically good out of nowhere? No. You're not going to be automatically good out of nowhere. You, you know day in, day out, he's been working hard. Just because he loves it, just because he needs it, just because he wants to be a part of it, around it, whatever it is, he loves the game. And the game finally came back to him and loved him. They allowed him to physically play in a professional environment for the first time in his life. Wow, what good news, huh? Isn't that amazing? Not because of hockey, not because of television, because something that he truly loved and he knew in his heart, in his mind, in his spirit, that this was the thing he was destined for and he did not stop. So we need to learn from him. We need to learn from this good news is don't stop, okay? Don't stop whatever you're doing with your life. Have a good time in what you're doing in your life and remember to always, always remember Mike. We'll get it done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. I'm going to get going, but I just want to say thank you so much for listening to me, Mike, Seth, and I. I really appreciate it. I love performing here. Uh, please tell your friends, tell your family to please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to this show. I can't do this by myself. I need you. And the ones that are listening, thank you so much for always listening to me, Mike, Self, and I. The Cubites, I know the Cube life. I know it. And I thank you for listening to this. Thank you so much. Also, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, February 29th. I'm getting close to the microphone. February 29th, I will be co-headlining at Blacktop Comedy for Top Dog Comedy! That's right. This Saturday night is another top dog comedy show it's going to be Kristen frisk she's going to be hosting it's going to be al schumann he's doing a guest spot Artie valenzuela is doing another guest spot and then all of a sudden alex elkin is going to be headlining co-headlining with me alex elkin is hilarious he's from oregon i've known him for a few years and i love this guy he's so funny he is one of the winners of the sf comedy competition very prestigious award and he and i are going to be co-headlining together it's going to be a lot of fun so come on out it's going to be a blacktop comedy the link's going to be in the bio i have all the tickets ready i'm gonna i got everything for you so click on it link it 
this Saturday. Come out. It's going to be fun. February 10th, 29th. And now, since we're all done with that and all done with our good news, it's time to salsa. Are you ready to salsa? I think it's time to salsa. Here we go. <laughs> Mike, let's get it done. Salsa! 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 Hey!